At the northern edge of Canada lies a pristine lake known to the locals as the Crystal Eye of Nunavik. Carved from the Earth's crust by a meteor about 1.4 million years ago, the crater rises 100 meters above the surrounding landscape. Its unique shape and location have meant that no water drains into or out of this lake. It remains one of the most pristine water basins in the world. Visitors to the Crystal Eye of Nunavik, or Pingualit, look down from the topmost peak to see a perfectly round basin. University of Arkansas Geosciences professor Sonia Hausman and an international team of researchers won a grant to study some of the processes that take place in this deep, ancient, almost untouched lake. The whole world is interested in this lake because it's so deep. So the bedrock is about 400 meter deep and the water depth is about 180 meter and we hoped that when we go there we find a, a sediment record that would cover several glacial interglacial periods. In fact, Pingualit may contain a climate record unlike any found elsewhere on Earth. This particular record is found in unicellular organisms called diatoms composed of algae with shells of silica. And they have very, uh, very um, uh, filigran glass shell. And these glass shells are deposited in the lake sediments. So, and depending on uh, lake level and pH, we have different kinds of community structures. The potential wealth of information excites scientists, but they must exercise great care when studying the lake. So this coring system is important to get, to get an undisturbed sediment water interface and you let it down like this and then this little ball releases and the sediment is then in the tube. No creeks or rivers feed or drain its basin. The only water in or out of the lake comes from rainfall and evaporation. This means it takes more than 300 years for the water in the basin to turn over, leaving the lake vulnerable to all forms of pollution. So the lake is about 3.7 kilometers wide in diameter and the coring location was almost in the middle of the lake. So we had to haul everything with sleds um, and on our backs to this uh, coring spot. Hausman and her colleagues traveled to northern Canada in May of 2007. Because the Parc National de Pingualit is so far north, land and water were still locked under snow and ice. That meant that the researchers had to take many steps to get to their living laboratory and to preserve its pristine environment. There's a crater and, a, and the elevation difference is about 150 feet and with a pulley system we had to transport everything down. Out on the ice, the scientists set up a field station. Once again, care was taken to minimize impact on the land and water. We never let, let uh, any uh, gasoline on the lake or also the course we took back every day and also uh, human uh, liquid and solid waste. After three weeks of enduring freezing temperatures and working on the ice, the researchers returned to their respective institutions. Now the results of their expedition have begun to pay off. Last summer we opened the course and took smear slides, so little samples of the sediment and looked at them immediately under the microscope and I found in several sections uh, diatoms and that's the, yeah, that's the proof that it was a lake at that time. So that means lake sediments from former warm periods are very likely to be conserved in this. Hausman and her colleagues hope to return to Lake Pingualit to continue to uncover the rich history that lies beneath the ice. Thanks to careful planning and attention to sustainable practices, the researchers have left the lake much as they found it, in a state that will allow others to unlock some of its mysteries and appreciate its spectacular landscape well into the future.